Hello, David Diga Hernandez here, and you are watching Spirit Church on Encounter TV. What does it mean to be anointed by God? For the next several weeks, I'll be teaching on the anointing of the Holy Spirit. This message is entitled, A Unique Anointing, and I'm focusing on the specific anointing that God has placed on you. You have been designed by the hand of God to carry upon your life a unique anointing. You're not a copy of anybody. You are the first of your kind, and God wants to use your life for a very specific purpose. And so, on this edition of Spirit Church, I'm talking about the unique anointing on your life. Stephen Moctezuma is here with me as usual. He's going to lead you in some worship, and then we're going to get into this lesson. Here's Stephen Moctezuma. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, no, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. So as I said, I'm going to be talking for the next few weeks about the anointing. And this message is titled, A Unique Anointing. And over the course of the next few weeks, I will be addressing different aspects of the anointing. And so today, I'm going to give you a little bit of an intro of what exactly the anointing is. And we're going to talk about the unique anointing that God has placed on your life. So what is the anointing? Well, in the Old Testament, the anointing oil was put upon those who would receive a task that was mandated by God. There was a natural ceremony of ordination or of appointment that would take place wherein someone would grab the oil and rub it or pour it on someone or something. This ceremonious action would signify that the person or the item was appointed, empowered, or set apart or consecrated uniquely unto God. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, we see that David was anointed to be king. In Exodus chapter 28 verse 41, we see that Aaron and his sons were to be anointed as priest. And we see in 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 16 that Elisha was to be anointed as a prophet. Now with their assignments came specific authority, came specific tasks, came specific power. 
the king who was anointed would receive that position as king. Uh, Aaron and his sons who were anointed as priests or the various priests who were also anointed received the task of carrying out priestly duties. And the prophets who received the anointing were marked by God in a unique way. They were marked by God and empowered by the Holy Spirit to hear God in a unique way and to declare God with a certain authority that not others had. Acts chapter 10 verse 38 says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. In the Old Testament, men were anointed ceremoniously with oil as a symbol of their assignment. In the Old Testament, the anointing oil wasn't necessarily the power, but it was the appointing to the power. It was the assignment to a position. And so in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit who is represented by the oil in the Old Testament, such as Christ was also concealed and then revealed in the New Testament, that Holy Spirit empowerment is the anointing on your life and on my life today. So the New Testament talks about how Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is symbolic, or the the oil was symbolic for the Holy Spirit. And just as the oil was rubbed on, smeared on, or poured on individuals to empower them or to appoint them to certain tasks. So the Holy Spirit has been poured out upon us to carry out the task that God has given to us. So again, let's look very carefully at this verse, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, not with oil, but with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. The anointing oil, as I said, represents the Holy Spirit. And being anointed means nowadays that you are marked by the Holy Spirit, that you are empowered by the Holy Spirit. The anointing is the power, it's the work, it's the authority, it's the assignment of the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 4 verse 18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me, to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. If you have the Holy Spirit upon your life, you are anointed. I want you to say this with me. I want you to say it boldly. Say, I am anointed. That's not arrogance. That's not pride. That's the reality. I want you to say it boldly. Say, I am anointed. If you are a born-again believer, if you have been filled with the Holy Spirit, then you are anointed. You have been empowered. You have been marked. You have been assigned. You have been given authority, a position from which you can command that certain things take place. You are anointed by the Holy Ghost. In the Old Testament, it was with oil. In the New Testament, it is with power and the Holy Spirit. God, with His hand, has marked you. God, with His voice, has called you. God has laid out a plan. God has laid out a design, a map, an assignment for your life. And He Himself has laid His hands upon you. He Himself has anointed you. Jesus is the one who anoints with the Holy Spirit. For the scripture says that he will baptize us with fire and the Holy Ghost. Jesus is the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, Jesus is the one who has anointed you. Jesus is the one who has marked you. Jesus is the one who has called you. It's not a man that calls us. We cannot call ourselves. In the scripture, whenever you saw the ceremonious anointing of a man assigned to a certain task, position, or gift, That man did not anoint himself. He did not pour oil upon himself. Instead, someone standing in God's position, a prophet would pour out the oil. Now one greater has come. His name is Jesus. And he has poured out the oil upon your life. He has marked you personally. And he has called you. Now we cannot be self-appointed. We must connect with the Lord if we are to receive the anointing that He has placed upon our lives. Now, think of all those in the Scripture who could have been assigned to today. 
And then think about the times in which we are living. Never has the gospel been so needed as today. There has never been a moment in our history that was so crucial to God's agenda for the ages. This time is crucial. This time is important. This time is historic in the church. There is a great harvest of souls such as there has never been since the church began. And now, during this time, in this hour, God has anointed you. When I look through the scripture at the anointed men and women of God, when I think of Esther and Mary and Moses and Paul the Apostle and John the Baptist and King David and Samuel and Samson, when I think of Isaiah and Ezekiel and Jeremiah, when I think of Solomon with his great wisdom, I think of people who are anointed by God. I think of people who have made an impact in our world. But they lived in their time. They lived for their assignment. They lived in their hour. Today, in this crucial moment, in this crucial time, God has chosen to send and anoint you with the power of the Holy Spirit. I want you to really think about that. God has sent you to this time. You may say, I have nothing to offer. I'm not important. I can't contribute anything to God's agenda. Well, you would be mistaken because if you have the Holy Spirit, then you have been anointed. The anointing is not something that is given to the super spiritual. Sure, the anointing can be cultivated and its power can intensify upon your life with holy living and obedience toward God. But the truth is that even those who live in that sort of anointing do so with the power of the Holy Spirit, with the aid of the Holy Spirit. We are helpless without Him. And so God has assigned you to this day. We all begin with a similar base of truth. We all begin with the Word. We all begin with the revelation that has been given in the Scripture. And then from there, we become the sum of all those who have imparted into our lives. I think of my life, and when I think of my life, I can name one person after another who has impacted me greatly. Some have impacted me who don't have a great name, and others have impacted me who, if I said their name, you would know their name. But I am the sum of all of those who have imparted into my life. God has brought people around you so that the anointing that's on them can get on you. You are attracted to what you are called to do. You are attracted to like callings. You are attracted to kindred callings. There is a pool, a divine pool, that is between you and those who are anointed in the same way you are anointed. I remember when I was about 11 years old, I often refer back to that time because that was a time of development for me. And during that time, when I was 11 years old, the Holy Spirit really began to form my faith. He began to fashion my theology. He began to take me, that 11-year-old boy, and cause me to be influenced by several other people. And I remember I would read books on great evangelists such as Oral Roberts, Catherine Coleman, John G. Lake, Smith Wigglesworth, and their lives through the pages of their biographies would impact me. And there was impartation that took place. And throughout the years, God has connected me with several mighty men and women of God. Some, like I said, who you would know and some who you'd have no idea who they are. In fact, those who you don't know have probably impacted my life greater than the others. And the truth is that you are a unique sum of all of those who have imparted into your life, all of those who have influenced you. There's that divine pool. That may be why you're watching this program right now, because there's a divine pool on this ministry and your life, because maybe you're called to do something similar to this. Maybe you too are called to minister the power of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you're called to teach people about the Holy Spirit and bring a new generation into an understanding of His person. Maybe you're called into the healing ministry to evangelize. Maybe you're called to pray for those who are hungry for a touch of God and see them receive from an intensely manifested presence on your life. 
If that's the case, then it's no wonder that you're watching this right now, but you, no matter what you're called to do, are uniquely anointed. I remember one, anointed, remember one time I was talking to the Lord and I was asking Him to reveal to me what He wanted me to do in the ministry. And I was flipping through Christian stations and some of the Christian television programs would catch my attention, some of them would not. But I'll never forget what happened when I switched to a certain channel and on that channel I began to see people worshiping the Lord. And the music was heavenly. The people who were worshiping had tears streaming down their faces. It was like they were experiencing heaven on earth. And as soon as I saw this peaceful image come across my television screen, I was glued to what I saw. And the people began to sing. They sounded like they were joining in with angels. And I'm watching this. So it was about 12 or 13 and I'm watching this. And I knew something was happening inside my spirit. Something just lit up within me. And I was drawn into what was happening. And then I began to see this preacher come on television and that same program. And I saw the power of God move through this man. People were falling under the power of the Holy Spirit. The glory of God, so just as you'll see on this channel on YouTube or on our TV program, it was the same thing. It's where I first saw it. And people were being healed and miracles were happening. And I knew in an instant that there was something kindred there. And the Lord used those broadcasts to impart into my life. And he also used the voices of those around me. And that has created a unique anointing. And you are the sum of the impartation on your life. You are also the sum of the moments that you experience with God, that you experience in his presence. It is a personal relationship that you have with the Lord. And he's taken you and he's molding you. And every time you pray and every time you read the scripture and every time you have an experience in His presence. And every time you worship Him or write something to Him, there's a unique development of an anointing on your life. Sure, we're all called to evangelize. We're all called to minister the power of the Holy Spirit to some degree. We are all called to expand the kingdom of God. But how we carry out those tasks, how we carry out those callings is unique to us. God created unique people to carry out unique tasks. And you have received a unique anointing from the Holy Spirit. John chapter 6, verse 1 says this, After this, Jesus crossed over to the far side of the Sea of Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiberias. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. Then Jesus climbed on a hill and sat down with his disciples around him. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. Turning to Philip, he asked, Where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, Even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Tell everyone to sit down, Jesus said. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes. The men alone numbered about 5,000. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and distributed them to the people. Afterward, he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So they picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. There was so much left over from what this boy had offered. And I looked at what the scripture said here, and I was astonished to see what Philip had said. And I'm sure that if you or I were in his position, maybe with what he understood at the time, we might also have the same skepticism or doubt. But he says in verse 7, even if we work for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. And then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy with five barley loaves and two fish. And then he says, but what good is that with this huge crowd? What good is that? Even if we work for months, we couldn't feed the 5,000. And I looked at this scripture 
And what jumped out at me was the thought that this boy's offering wasn't enough to feed the over 5,000 people who were gathered. What good is this? They asked. You may ask the same about your life. You may ask the same about how God has anointed you. You know, I used to have very intense insecurities about myself. And I want to be careful how I, put, how I communicate this because I don't want to exaggerate anything, but internally there was a very intense struggle with insecurities. Um, for instance, my last name, Hernandez. There are people who look down on you with certain last names. Now, I'm not saying that people on a mass scale are prejudiced toward Hispanics. I've not, that's not been my experience. Maybe it's been yours, but my experience has not been that. However, there have been some instances where I knew that I was being looked down upon and treated a certain way because I was Hispanic, because of my last name. And again, I don't want to get into the racial divides that are created by the hype of the mainstream media and what you might see around the world today. But I will acknowledge that there are some instances like that that people experience. It comes from every race and it goes to every race. It's not necessarily even a, a problem with the specific race. The problem is the heart and sin. However, still there was that insecurity in me. This insecurity of being lesser than. And then at the same token, I had this certain sound in my voice that I still have, and I know you may find it humorous. I'm not saddened by it at all. And so don't, don't, don't use the comment section to say, oh, Brother David, it's not true. Look, I embrace who I am. There's a certain nerdy quality, as one might say, to my voice. There's a sound to it that has a nerdy sound. And even in the way I present, it can be a little on the nerdy side. And that's okay with me. I've embraced that, and I know God uses that. And then I used to be really insecure about how, how straight my hair was, and it was almost looked like a, a bowl was placed on top of my head and, with certain haircuts. Some people tell me it looked like, a, if you've seen it, those little Lego characters, you could just pull the hair right off of them. That's sometimes what I think my hair looks like. And so while this is humorous now, and I really do find it humorous now, there was a time when I had a lot of insecurity about a lot of the things about me. People used to get very angry at the way I ministered. I used to pray for the sick and, and they'd come out of wheelchairs and people would cheer and they thought that's too showy or people would be slain in the spirit in groups at a time and people would say that's too showy, you're making it like entertainment and they would become upset with me. And I began to doubt myself and my call as a person. But the truth is every single quality about me fits perfectly into the call that God has given to me. You know, my last name in this season of the past three years, Hernandez, has opened more doors than I could have imagined. My voice is used to teach the Word. It's used to communicate truths that people would normally find complex, and now it's simplified. My straight hair, when I travel, especially to Asian countries, I fit right in. I'm welcome because of my hair. And they actually ask if I'm one of them and they say, well, your hair, I thought you were Filipino or I thought you were Asian. And I love that God has used every aspect of my personality, my person. Everything about you God wants to use. The way you look, the way you talk, the way your demeanor is, the style of your voice, the quality of your voice, everything. God wants to use you. God wants to use you as a unique expression of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He has uniquely anointed you. It's not a matter of being gifted. It's not a matter of being talented or intellectual. It's not a matter of being popular. It's simply a matter of surrendering, just like that boy did. The five loaves and the two fish, that wasn't enough to feed 5,000, not in his own hands. But in the hands of God, it was more than enough. You may look at your life and say, Lord, I don't have much to offer. But what you can offer is your surrender. And there is no limit to what God can do with the surrendered life. You're uniquely anointed. God has called you. You are not anointed 
to be the next anybody. You are anointed to be the first you. 1 John chapter 2, verse 27 says, But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. The scripture is not saying we don't need to be taught by teachers or pastored by a pastor. It's simply saying that we have what we need to carry out what we're called to do. You are anointed. Now, I know this teaching may have a little bit of a different feel to it. I wanted to communicate this in a very reverent way. And I know that God is touching your life. You're anointed. You're uniquely anointed. Let's pray that God would show you the anointing on your life. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for that one watching right now. And Father, I ask in your precious name, in the name of Jesus, that that one watching would experience new sight in the Spirit. Lord, that they would suspend their skepticism. And Father, that they would embrace who you have called them to be. That they would embrace the qualities of their personality and their looks and their being. And Father, I pray that you would mark them. Mark us, Jesus, with your anointing, we pray. And I want you to say it if you agree. Amen. Well, that's it for the lesson. I want to now welcome the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. We're so glad that you've joined this week, and we are so excited about the growth of Spirit Church. Now, I do want to apologize to you. I have to be transparent. I am just very exhausted this week. I've had, we have, I've done preaching almost every day, and I'm actually leaving to Ohio in just, just a little while from now, about, just about 12, 15 hours, I'll start getting ready for that trip. But I do want to say that because I know I'm, I'm not as energized as I normally am on this teaching. So if you're sensing that, that's what that is. Um, but, you know, all it takes is one service. If I get under this, uh, the anointing, I'll be fully energized again. But I want to go now to the comments. These are the comments on last week's teaching, and this was on demonic doors. Here we have a comment from Ivana Toll who writes, I'm tithing this because I believe the Lord has put it on my heart to do so. I cannot find a church that speaks truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And since the beginning of my walk with Christ, after being baptized in the Holy Spirit, this is the only ministry that has been able to explain the supernatural things that have happened to me in the name of Jesus. So I support you all, and I pray it grows, and that more souls are touched and comforted as mine has been so much. I don't have much. I'm a single mother of three. All I ask is for the prayers for me and my children as we move and journey to where God has called us to be. Thank you. I want to thank you for your support of this ministry. And I know that in that position, sometimes it can be difficult, but this is what I always like to tell people who are on the verge of giving to a ministry or beginning to support a ministry. We say, Lord, bless me and I'll give. And we imagine that God will send something supernaturally and then we'll use that to bless. But the truth is that God starts with what you have. We say, God, bless me and I'll give. God says, give and I will bless you. Thank you for your support, stepping out in faith. I want you to know from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate you. Here's another comment from Animalistic. I've just discovered your channel. I've watched like 10 in a row already, and I loved every one. I want to follow God and become faithful. I just feel like I can't. I've sinned so much in my life. I feel like I was thrown into a dark closet and got the door slammed in my face. I don't know how to explain it. I feel as if I, tr as if I tried to, I would be ignored, as if I'm doomed already. Wish I could explain better. Let me read that again. I want to make sure I understand it. I feel as if I tried to, I would be ignored. So you're saying that, I believe, that you think that if you attempted to serve the Lord, that you would fail or be rejected by God. Can I just tell you, that is a lie from the enemy. Jesus will not reject you. He will never turn one away, the scripture says. And God will embrace you. Believe the truth of the word and discard the lies of the enemy. God will embrace you. And let me tell you something. You can make it. I know you will. 
Lillian Velasquez writes, wow, that makes so much sense. If you want to know what she's talking about, go ahead and watch that teaching. I know you'll enjoy it. Peter Paul writes, Pastor David, this video is really good and helped me a lot. Thank you for the discourse. We have a comment here that says, thank you for this series, David. It was such a blessing. Renee Sun writes, hi, David. I just want to say that I am so thankful that God directed me to your channel about five months ago. I have found a sense of clarity and purpose in your sermons. Well, thank you for watching, Renee. We appreciate your viewership. Ian Linder writes, really enjoyed the book. It clarified a number of issues. The YouTube videos were very good and together made a very strong message. Well, thank you for that comment, Ian. Ian is talking about the book, 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare. That series I just finished on spiritual warfare was taken from that book. And there's a lot more in the book that I didn't get to cover in the video series. So if you get a chance, go ahead and pick up that book, 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare. You can get it from our website or you can go to Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Barnes & Noble also has it in stores to get your copy. That is it for the comments. I'm going to talk to you now for just a second. We've been getting a tremendous response to helping us take the next phase of ministry. And I want to thank you for all of your support. Those of you who are partnered with this ministry, continue to support the gospel through this ministry. Don't stop your giving. We're approaching November, December. This is a time where people say, I need to start pulling back on giving. The last thing that should go is your giving to the gospel. And if you give your first fruits to the gospel, I know that God will bless you. God will take care of your needs. Now, here's what I'm asking. We need a thousand new $30 a month partners to join so that we can open up a brand new ministry center where we can build a brand new set, where we can accommodate a studio audience. We'll begin doing Sunday night meetings. It won't be a church, but we will do Sunday night meetings where I'll teach, Stephen will do worship, and we'll gather together for prayer and experience the power of the Holy Spirit. On top of that, we're gonna have 24 seven prayer rooms. I want it to be a place where people can, can come from all over the world and experience the power and presence of the Holy Spirit and the miraculous. And so, that's not all that's a part of that next growth phase. That's the major part of it. This also includes expanding the television outreach, doing more events in more parts of the United States and in more parts of the world, both national and international meetings. So if you're looking at the world and saying, somebody's got to do something about the way things are going, here's the something that you can do. You're not powerless. We can change the world. When you join your gift with ours, what you're doing is you're empowering each other to be more effective. We together are pooling all of our resources and unapologetically spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, declaring there is no other way to heaven other than through Jesus, and he is the way. And we preach that gospel with truth demonstrated in the power of the Holy Spirit. You want to be a part of that. You want to help us change the world. Don't say someone else. Don't say some other time. It's you. Do it right now today. Click on the link that's just about to appear over my head or on the donate button. If you're not watching this on YouTube, then go ahead and use the information at the bottom of the screen, which is davidhernandezministries.com slash partner to become a ministry partner today. So I want to say I love you. I want to thank you. Go ahead and do that. And that is it for this edition of Spirit Church. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Hey fam, Stephen Moctezuma here. I want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel and to share our content. I hope you're enjoying all the content that we're sending your way. In addition to David's teachings and ministry videos, you can also join me on my worship playlist where I release a brand new video every week. Thank you guys so much for watching Encounter TV. God bless.